first first paper is about the midterm result of aortic valve repair with external aortic annulopathy toward the bicuspid aortic regurgitations by Dr. Hiromasa Nakamura. So please. So, thank you, Chairman. So now, my topic is midterm result of aortic valve repair with external aortic annuloplasty hole by caspid aortic regurgitation. Firstly, most by caspid AR patients are young, but AVR for young patients is not desirable because given the post-operative risk such as bleeding, thrombus, and infection, and so, if possible, not replacement, but plasty is suitable. However, there are some problems. Uh, firstly, aortic valve repair is still not established, the, and the risk of recurrence is there. And the main reason of recurrence is shallow coaptation. And the reason of shallow coaptation to repair not only leaflet, but also annuloplasty are necessary to gain good coaptation. So in my institute, we have introduced a new aortic annuloplasty technique, external aortic annuloplasty, which technique is that aortic annular is covered with artificial graft outside and controls the dilation of aorta. We report the midterm result of AVP with EAA for bicuspid AR. Patient period is from January 2013 to August 2018. Ten cases of bicuspid AR we use AVP with EAA was performed. Uh, this is the operative slide. Firstly, we transected aorta and exposed aortic leaflet. You can see there is a rafe and by caspid AR. And firstly, we check the quality of leaflet. And we check is it possible to replace, uh, is it possible to repair or replace. And if repair is possible, firstly, we check the size of annulus. Usually, we insert it both sizes, and this, in this case, is 30 millimeter. Then we uh, taped uh, LCC and RCA respectively. Then we check the height of each leaflet. And this, in this case, NCC is 25, LCC is 22, and uh, fusion RCC is 90. Then we sutured two O Tycron with project under the uh, arnia, under the leaf red and six. Then we cut the artificial graft. In this case, annular size is 13, so we use the artific artificial graft 13 millimeter. Then we sutured the previous two O Tycron and covered it under the um, annulus. And then we use this technique, we control the dilation of an annulus. Then we check the size of annulus. In this case, uh, diameter decreased from 30 to 24. And as for decision of graft size, it's very simple. Firstly, we check the length of each leaflet. In this case, you see LCC is 21 and RCC is 70 and NCC is 22. If we would like to take the coaptation length is 7 millimeter, firstly, we add a small, smaller length of L leaflet. In this case, 21 and 17, in total 38, and minus 7 millimeter by 2, so in 24. Empirically, the size of annulus is 6 millimeter less than the size of graft, so if we would like to get the coaptation length 7 millimeter, this in this case is 24 is the target diameter. That's why we plus 6 millimeter, and then we use the graft size 13 millimeters. And the patient background is age is 41 years old, very young. 
As for ejection fracture is almost 60% and AR grade is every case is severe. And concomitant procedure is as follows. And result of measurement is LCC 22, RCC 19, NCC 23 on average, and we use graft size almost 28 or 30 millimeter. 26 and 32 was used one case respectively. The change of VAJ is from 29 to 23, from post operation to post operation. And as for coaptation length, it's improved from 4.4 to 7.6. And TTE in discharge, ejection fraction EF is uh, 53%. As for AR grade, nine cases is less than trivial. Only one case is mild. And pressure gradient max 23 and mean is 13. The each factor of TTE show DD decreased slightly, and ejection fraction once decreased but improved to up to 16 during follow-up. Peak pressure gradient and mean gra pressure gradient is uh, keep same level. In this charge, AR is less than TRIPR, is nine case, and mild is one case. No hospital deaths and no major complication. Mid-term follow-up average is 3.5 years. AR less than trivial is nine case. Unfortunately, moderate is one case. However, or in this case, NYHA grade is one, and DD does not change, and no symptom. That's why we observe no operation cases. So successful key point for plasty is obtaining good coaptation ranks. However, most case of cases show annular dilatation. Treatment of leaflet only cannot obtain good coaptation ranks. That's why combination treatment, both leaflet and annular dilatation is necessary. So we introduce AVP with EAA, and early and midterm result is good. AVP for bicuspid AR is one choice, especially for young patients. Thank you for your attention. Any question from the, um, the audience? Um. Hello. You said it is not an established technique, right? Pa pardon? Hmm? You said it is not an established technique. So how do you convince patients for the surgery? Sorry, pa pardon? Um, you said this is not an established technique. I mean, yeah, so he, the how do you convince how patients for how surgery? How do you convince the patient um, for the, like the consent for the surgery? Uh, I, th I think the annulopathy uh, is yeah. not. Uh, it usually is, um, uh, you mean leaflet? I mean, this is not a standard, I mean, established, this is not a uh, ah, technique. Uh, yeah. You are just uh, starting to do new technique, right? Ah, uh, yes, but uh, in European country, uh, the uh, commercial extra analytic ring is uh, prevailing, but in Japan, still not. So we use artificial graft and to control the dilatation of uh, annulus. My question was, how do you convince patient for the surgery? How do you uh, co commit? Convince. Uh, so, how do you convince? I mean, how do you take consent from patient? Ah, uh, yes, I mean, especially, um, we usually use this case is bicuspid AR case. Actually, some cases we use tricuspid case, uh, but uh, um, some um, comparing with bicuspid, uh, tricuspid is not, the result is not so good. So we prefer to use this case by bicuspid AR. Yeah, I agree with you that uh, now in the European guideline is like the aortic valve repair is in the class one indication in the European guideline. And also the um, endoloplasty is the key um, success of the, uh, for the repair as well. So I think it's quite standard now. Yeah, I want to ask you about how do you choose the size of the um, annu like the annulus? Uh, we usually the ball size ring, mm -hmm. uh, ball sizer, and inserted. And uh, 
Firstly, we would like to obtain the computation length is 7 mm at least, so check the uh, length of each leaflet, and uh, then empirically uh, to obtain the length, uh, uh, minus 6 mm is a suitable size. That's why if we choose a aortic, um, uh, aortic graft outside, we should put a plus 6 mm. For example, in uh, shortest, Leaflet is in total 38, and we would like to get a 7 millimeters computation length. 7 by 2 is 14, so 38 minus 14 is 24. So 24 is the suitable annular size. If you do so, I use a plus 6 millimeter, and then we use 30 millimeter artificial graft. That means you choose the size of the annulus individually in each patient to achieve the coaptation height. Is that correct? Ah, yes, yes. But uh, but if the uh, basically if patient under size is very small, is that in that case, for example, under size is 21 or 22, in like such case, it's very difficult to use this case. Only if under size is big, I use, prefer to use this technique. Okay. And do you have an uh, explanation that in your series, the gradient, a mean gradient of the aortic valve is like. It's teen, it's not the single digit. Do you have any explanation why is that? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> so, mm, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I saw your annulus is down from 28 to like mean 22. Mm. It's yeah. quite small from like the normal mm. aortic valve. Well, yes, I'm not but sure actually, yes, the size is small, but, but uh, comparing with, but uh, as for any uh, patient symptom, no patient symptom, and uh, with, on average, three five three point five years. Uh, so, but no any problem. So we just observe. We have to wait for the long term result. But congratulations! This is a um, very good result of Thank the aortic valve repair. I have one question. Okay, one more question. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I'm Shin from the CCIT Thailand. I have one question about uh, your presentation. So, <coughs> actually the. What's the strong point of the, this technique compared with the commercial available thing? Mm -hmm. So you said uh, it's not available in your country now, but if it be the available in your country, mm -hmm. will you change your procedure or doing this procedure? Uh, so actually, it's up to the cost because if we usually this technique artificial graft or we use in total artificial graft, but we use only three or five millimeter. Uh, so actually, in, as for cost, expensive. If the commercial ring is pre, uh, used in our country and uh, comparing the cost, and if okay, I think I will use commercial ring. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So we move on to the next paper. Uh, the next paper with uh, so with this Dr. Kamran come here. Oh no, okay, we move on to the next paper. The next paper is about the study of the shape of the thoracic aorta associated with aortic valve regurgitations by Dr. Eiki Shimada. Please start. And thank you for the introduction. Today, I'd like to talk the shape of thoracic audit associated with audit valve regurgitation. This is a paper on blood flow rate and wall shear stress in both bicuspid aortic valve and tricuspid aortic valve. The each shapes of the aortic are shown, and the outer is more enlarged vertically and horizontally at the tricuspid valve than at the bicuspid valve. Looking at these shapes, there appears to be a difference in the direction between the two shapes. This is what we investigated. Dilatation of the outer is generally measured by the maximum short diameter there are a few reported study of the length of the thoracic outer or dilatation of the entire outer. We investigate the change in the shape of the thoracic outer 
at the bicuspid valve and tricuspid valves, separated in cases of aortic regurgitation. 357 patients underwent surgical treatment for aortic regurgitation at our hospital between January 2010 and February 2019. The subject of this study were 345 patients. Malfunction syndrome and acute aortic dissection had been excluded. 100 patients had bicuspid valve and 245 patients had tricuspid valve. The patient's characteristics were as follows. The, the bicuspid valve group had a higher rate of males and larger LVDD. The tricuspid valve group had older people, a higher rate of hypertension, decreases renal function, and higher BNP. The LD diameter was measured at the annulus, sinus of valsalva, ST junction, ascending outer, distal arch, and, uh, and descending outer, and index to BSA. In the bicuspid valve group, the annulus diameter was enlarged. And in the tricuspid valve group, all sections of the outer after the annulus were dilated. Next, we investigated the extension of the thoracic art by measuring the, the distance from the right coronary artery to the brachiocephalic artery on the side of the greater curvature. The distance from the right coronary artery to the aortic arch apex and and the distance from the ascending outer to the descending outer. Each measure uh, was then indexed. This shows the result. The triskis valve group has higher values and the significant extension of the anterior thoracic arch was seen. As a method for simple measurement of the enlargement of the anterior thoracic artery, we calculated the area by multiplying the vertical distance from the right coronary artery to the aortic arch apex by the horizontal distal from the ascending to the descending artery as, uh, as the outer area. This shows the result. The tricuspid valve group had a significant enlargement. An investigation of the correlation between the arch area and the ascending art shows a positive correlation in both groups. In the tricuspid valve group, there was a strong tendency. In addition, we investigated correlation between the dilatation and age and the surgery. And the result showed positive correlation in patients with bicuspid valve group. In the tricuspid valve group, the rate of enlargement tended to accelerate uh, after the age of 60. This shows a pathological result for the aortic wall. Problems include Cystic medical necrosis and rupture of the junior media were seen in 9.3% of the bicuspid valve group and 16% of the tricuspid valve group. There tend to be more problems in the tricuspid valve group, but no relationship with aortic extension or enlargement was seen. This shows a paper comparing the pathology of the aortic wall with aortic diameter from 4.0 to 5.0 cm between bicuspid and tricuspid valves. 
The extent of the elastic fiber loss, smooth mass cell loss, medical fibrosis, and sclerosis was found to be more severe in the tricuspid valve. This result indicated the pathological abnormality also occur in the tricuspid valve aortic wall to a greater extent than we have thought. In the aortic regurgitation patient with bicuspid valve, in dilatation of the arteries and the ascending aorta was mainly recognized. However, the entire thoracic aorta was enlarged and extended in tricuspid valve patient. In Conclusion, in the current guideline for surgical indication for aortic regurgitation, the dilatation of the left ventricle and functional decline are uh, the surgical intervention factors. However, the size of valve and aortic diameter may be important factors for decision for surgical indication in the aortic regurgitation patient. The dilatation and extension of thoracic artery are increasing rapidly over 60 years old in patient with tricuspid artery bulk. And it also should be closely following up the state of the artery. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations for your study. Did you have any questions from the floor? No, I have a simple question that it's wonderful how to you measure the aortic arch area. That is a wonderful measurement. So, but your conclusion is the uh, depend on the size of the aortic sinus and the aortic annulus for the decision to do the surgery for the AR. Can you apply your measurement for the arch area to to perform in the surgery? Uh, now. Um uh, we don't have the um, operation point yeah. of uh, our area now. Uh, but, but I think you have some relation from your statistics that uh, in the tricuspid aortic valve group have more increase than the bicuspid valve, right? Mm -hmm. So if you continue this study, like uh, use this measurement to the uh, some inclusion of some method to uh, precise how to uh, decide when do you the perform the ascending or the as like this is maybe good study from the next from now yes. right yes it is a future work yeah. uh, this study uh, okay thank you thank you so we move on to the next study uh, the next study is about the quality of life after valve surgery in rheumatic heart disease Presented by Dr. Dikshiya Joshi. So let's move on. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Rupak Pradhan from Nepal. And I'll be uh, presenting on a study done on quality of life after valve surgery in patients with rheumatic heart disease. Uh, this study was done by Dr. Dikshiya Joshi, a senior colleague of mine. Well, she had herself registered for this conference, but for some reason she could not come. So I will be presenting on her behalf. Talking about life after valve replacement, uh, over the last uh, few decades, the heart, uh, heart valve replacement has become a safe and a routine surgical procedure, but the replacement devices are still far from ideal. Uh, various improvements have been done and still ongoing. The problem with the mechanical heart valves is that the patient has to undertake, uh, patient has to take mandatory lifelong anticoagulation, whereas uh, the tissue bioprosthetic uh, valves, the problem with them is that the tissues wither with time. The improvement in quality of life is one of the principal goal of valve surgery. Just uh, replacing the valve and making the patient symptomatic free is not enough. Potential quality of life for survivors is also equally increasingly important in evaluating the late results. And all the factors that determine the quality of life are strongly affected by the operation post-operatively. And returning to the normal activities, maintaining self-esteem, keeping normal relationship with, at work, in the community, and at home are the main things of concern for the patients. 
The purpose of this study was to assess the quality of life in patients living with mechanical heart valves. The design was a cross-sectional self-administered assessment of quality of life. Uh, it is a retrospective study. The demographic characteristics and cardiovascular health history of patients who underwent uh, PAL surgery at Sahit Gangalal National Heart Center, Nepal, at different times was recorded along with the answers to the questionnaire form in a period of three weeks in clinic, clinical visit of uh, Department of Cardiac Surgery Unit 1. There were total 131 patients, uh, of which 42 were males and 89 were females. The quality of life index uh, before and after the procedure was uh, were determined. The quality of uh, index produces five scores, quality of life overall and in other four domains, which include health and functioning, psychological and spiritual domain, social and economic domain, and family domain. We have analyzed the quality of life in all five soft skills. Uh, this is the questionnaire format uh, for quality of life index cardiac version. Uh, this was a uh, designed by Dr. Carol Ferenc and Powers. And here we have uh, in this questionnaire two sets of questions. One, how satisfied you are with and how important to you is. And how we have asked the questions uh, with how satisfied you are with your health, your health care, your amount of chest pain that you have both before and after the surgery. And how important things uh, are to you is uh, how important is your health, your health care, having no chest pain. And there's a six-point scale. Uh, uh, one for very satisfied, moderately satisfied, slightly, dis uh, slightly satisfied, slightly dissatisfied, moderately dissatisfied, and very dissatisfied. We have translated this uh, questionnaire into the local language so that uh, it would be easier for the patients to answer these questions. The results were that there were, uh, the age range was varied from 16 to 75 years. There were more of female patients, which was about 68%. The majority of cases was for mitral valve replacement, uh, almost around 63%. Aortic valve replacement was for about 13.7%, and then DV, a double valve replacement for about 23.6%. Concomitant tricuspid valve repair was done in around 28%. Uh, this is a chart showing the quality of life index in overall all of the five domains. Here we can see the family domain as uh, here uh, the red shows the score after the operation, the blue before the operation. And the score is highest uh, among the f in the family domain. And there is a significant improvement, uh, maximum difference we can see in the health and functioning domain. The mean of overall quality of life index was assessed, uh, which was about 23.39 on a scale from 0 to 3 for which high risk scores indicate higher quality of life. Now, subject reported to the lowest quality of life score in health and functioning domain prior to surgery, which is almost around 16%, which improved by 47.15% after surgery. The score uh, turned up to 22.9, that is almost 23, and which is the most significant improvement that we found in among all other domains. The psychological and spiritual domain improved by 16.68%, social and economic domain by 26.24% and family domain by 11.49%. And we can see that the family domain had the highest score at the latest follow-up, score almost 29. And so we can see that the family support seems to be the biggest stre strength in our population. Uh, this is a chart showing the quality of index, uh, life index comparison between the male and female patients. Here we find that the women had significantly lower mean overall quality of life index compared to the male. So quality of life improved with time. There was aesthetically significant correlation between the duration of operation and overall quality of life index. And the ACE did not appear to limit the quality of life. Coming to this discussion, we found that we know that the quality of life index was developed by Ferenc and Power. And uh, Dr. Ferenc describes quality of life as uh, a person's sense of well-being that, uh, that stems from the satisfaction or dissatisfaction with the areas of life that are important to him or her. The full benefit of surgery can only be achieved when the patient's quality of life and psychological status are maintained by not just uh, making them symptomatically free. This research is unique in that this is the first of its kind in our part of population and also in rheumatic heart disease. There are other papers which also concluded that quality of life improves uh, after the heart valve replacement. And also there is, age does not limit the quality of life
And to, un to conclude, this study confers significant improvement in quality of life after valve surgery with time. Age does not appear to limit the quality of life, and family support seems to be the biggest strength in our population. Nevertheless, the results also indicate that continued efforts are needed to improve health and financial independence of patients after valve surgery. Uh, a little about the PTI and services in remote areas of Nepal. Well, in Nepal, there are not much of uh, INR services for uh, all people. So we have uh, a few people have together gathered and donated PTI INR machines to the local health uh, personnel and uh, provide service to the local people. And also at the end, I'd like to tell you that my country is uh, hosting 2020 as a tourism year for Visit Nepal 2020. So please do visit our country for beautiful memories and lifetime experience. Thank you. I have one question. Uh, when you uh, monitor the quality of life after surgery, when is the time you you have that questionnaire? I mean, after a week or immediately or one month or two months, do you have an, that? Um, this is a study from overall. This is the first time we've done in our center. So we uh, did the study in all the patients that had visited us in our regular follow-up who come for the regular INR checkup. So it's the recent one as well as the old ones. So you mean some patient you have like one week so yeah. after that? And do you have not exactly one week, at least three months and followed by ten, fifteen years. Oh, I so it includes the whole I mean whole length of yeah. Uh, yeah, but in the study you did not um classify the time timing of the follow up I mean it might be better if you have the timeline. Um, can see more clearly if um, your quality of life is like improving after surgery as you, s you conclude in the yes, with your time it improves. but we haven't seen the, the data about yeah. that. That's yeah. one of the limitations. Right. Just a few questions uh, for my curiosity because you said about the rheumatic heart disease and we know that about rheumatic heart disease, we can replace many of the valve, maybe we replace with the post bioprothesis valve or maybe valve repair in some case. Uh, why did you just choose on the mechanical valve? Uh, because we have more of the replacement with the mechanical heart valve. The thing is that our government uh, provides free service for mechanical heart valve, but if patient has to undergo prosthetic heart valve, yeah, the patient has to buy themselves. So for financial reasons. We have more patients of mechanical heart valve than of biological. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Chu Mai is here. Okay, no, so we go move on to the last sessions. The last session presented by Dr. Soki Kurumisawa about the interoperative left ventricular rupture associated with the mitral valve replacement. So please, let's start. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am a Japanese fellow in Lampa Hospital, and it's a just case report. Uh, left ventricular rupture associated with uh, mitral valve replacement it's a fatal complication of mitral valve replacement. These injuries have been classified on the basis of their location into three types. Type 1 rupture are located in the posterior arterial ventricular group, type 2 in the posterior ventricle at the base of the papillary muscle, and type 3 is the between 1 and 2 type. We experienced a successful treatment of type 1 rupture after mitral valve replacement. A uh, 49-year-old male patient was transferred to our hospital for surgical treatment of mitral bulb with mitral regeneration due to infective endocarditis. Uh, ECG showed normal sinusism, chest x-ray showed no significant congestion and no dilation of the uh, cardiothoracic ratio. Uh, CBC showed white blood cell count was high and hemoglobin level was low. Gram positive bacilli was detected in the blood, and intravenous cephatoxylation was initiated. Blood chemistry showed albumin value was low, and liver enzyme was high. Uh, trans 
そらせエコカードフィッシュオート、モーバブルベジテーション、アタッチトゥアンテリアアンポステリアリフレットオブマイトルバルブ。マイトルバルブはインタクト、インクルーディングアウティックマイトラルカーテン。アンダーマイトルリガジテーションはシビア。バッター、アウルティックバルブはノープロブレムス。アンドオルソトライカスピあれトライカスピットバルブはノープロブレムス。The patient underwent median s t a n a t o m y with superior transceptor approach. マイトルバルブ was exposed. There was destruction of the vegetation on posterior and anterior leaflet. Thus, both leaflet were dissected. A 29mm bicarbon mechanical valve was implanted in intranular position with e v e r t i n g mattress suture. After the aortic clamp was taken off, we noticed a massive hemorrhage from the posterior,、uh, from the posterior AV group. Under immediate repeated cardiac arrest, the left atrium was reopened. The implanted mitral mechanical valve was removed. We found the site of small tear in the endocardium just below the、uh, anterior lateral commissure to、uh, P1 area, anterior lateral scallop.、Uh, we, repeat, we, uh, we repaired the site of small tear with large bovine pericardial patch, continuously sutured from the healthy endocardium to the left atrium across the annulus. Then, second large bovine pericardium patch was continuously sutured over the outside ruptured area of the AV group.、Uh, to avoid further injury to the left ventricular posterior wall, a 27mm、uh, bicarbon mechanical mitral valve was implanted with a supranural position using a vertical mattress suture. And then we inserted IABP to decrease the afterload of intraventricular pressure. And the patient was taken into the intensive care unit and extubated third post operative day. The patient was discharged in a good condition after six post operative days. Uh, the risk factor of type 1 left ventricular rupture are female, old age, small left ventricle, heavily calcificated mitral valve annulus, endocarditis with annular abscess. And the、uh, interoperative factors of type 1 left、uh, ventricular rupture are oversized processes, excess excision on posterior leaflet, and deep stitch through left ventricular muscle. In our case, excess excision on posterior leaflet or A、deep stitch might be the cause of left ventricular rupture. For the repair of left ventricular rupture,、uh, internal and external approach have been reported. And the previous report said external approach is、uh, complicated because the original internal disruption site and external breathing point are often different l o c a t i o n And therefore, internal Approach is considered safer and more successful approach. In our case, we covered the tear with large bovine pericardial patch sutured on the intact endocardium and the left atrium across the annulus. Then we covered the outside ruptured area of AB group with large bovine pericardial patch. And then to decrease the left ventricular peak pressure, we inserted the IABP during. Weaning of the CPB.、Uh, we successfully repaired the rupture of the AV group after MVR. Early diagnosis, proper exposure, and complete repair of the TR through an internal approach are important. Thank you very much. So, you have questions? Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. I am Hiroma Sanakamura, Showa University, Tokyo. I have two questions. Firstly, did you do the replacement. Did you do use the、uh, coda preservation or posterior leaflet? And second, is that、uh, in this case, is IE,、uh, active IE. So I think after the operation, antibiotic treatment is necessary, but discharge is、uh, six days after the operation. So, how do you treat? I see.、Uh, first question、uh, this case,、uh, the posterior leaflet is、uh, 
also distracted by the eye. So um, don't preserve the poster, posterior leaflet and uh, the basal holder also cutting off completely in this case. And uh, second, uh, <laughs> maybe intravenous cephalaxone in OPD in the outpatient clinic and then uh, maybe change it to the oral medication. Maybe, but sorry, I haven't checked it ah. well. I see, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I have the risk for humiliation, but after you redo the second time, so the first time you use the, um, you put the microwave, the infra-annular technique, but the second time you use the um, supra-annular technique, uh, is there any consideration why you use the um, supra-annular technique for um, uh, or the second time of the... Uh, the no pointer, okay. Uh, maybe I think the supranular position is uh, better uh, because uh, if to insert intranular, uh, it's close to the type 1 rupture area. But in supranular, uh, the, um, how to say, the valve, valve isn't touched to the rupture area and it's far from the tear area. So. Mm, yes, some report sets like uh, left atrium to sutured with a uh, uh, felt, felt, scarred, scarred valve or something. So, yes, I mean that uh, far from the disrupted ruptured area is uh, better for second rupture of the LV. Maybe, yeah, because at my thought, if we put um, the um, the the valve like hit to the um, just like like use the valve to close the defect is much mm -hmm. better. But we have no experience, so maybe we have to ask Professor Tavisa. Could could you please? This is the last section of this. Um, <laughs> but are we talking about this uh, patient has like LV rupture? Yeah. So after first time they repair with the um, intra annular technique. And after they repair the LV rupture at the annulus, they put the patch and use the um, valve as a supra annular technique. What do you think about that? And if you have, uh, you, do you have any experience about this? And which way should we should do? We all uh, hope that we don't have the experience. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> but uh, this is some. Sometimes we have to face it. I mean, this happened, and the LV rupture is one of the most. Uh, life-threatening complication immediately. And uh, to deal with this, uh, in addition to think about super or sub, the most important part, I think, is the lion that you first, you have to recognize it immediately that, uh, and have some precaution, a high suspicion, some hematoma around the AV groups. Then if you really have that, the only thing that you, I think the most common pitfall for those who do this is trying to repair inside, trying to do something like, you see the, 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 the up from outside, you see some leaking part, you try to suture over that. Without knowing that, most of the time is not the rupture site. It is something like stalemate and fracture. And then the, 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 the things, the site that you suture from outside, it create is more damage, and if, especially the, if the myocardium and and coronary artery. So the most, this is the most common pitfall, pitfall and then leading to death. The only thing that I would like to, to stress here, stop the heart, remove everything, re-explore, put in the big patch, and then either to use the supra or sub, it depends on the situation, mm -hmm. that how strong, how, how, how much the damage and put in the right thing, the small durable part, either the pericardium or the other part. But the most important 
diagnosis and from just very aggressive. We came on, then make it uh, arrested and then remove everything, re explore it, and then make a large, big patch inside so that you can cover all. That is the most important part. So to implant or not to implant, I like this. I think it depends on the situation. You can deal with that e easily after that. This is my, my a little experience. I hope I don't see it again. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, what do you think, Arun Chatarun? In uh, David, <laughs> Siri, what? what? Actually, actually, you are. You said you are lucky that you don't have one. Actually, in my in my career, I had like two hours <laughs> after. <laughs> it's is terrible. Yeah. So, but yeah, but like you said, the first thing we have to like because for the unexperienced surgeon, when you see the bleeding try. come up, you can yeah, try. Oh, maybe it's from this, from that, and you try to put the suture in. And after that, we know if we have this situation, it's like a tip of iceberg. We have to know this is always yeah. that mm -hmm. You have to be aggressive, and you have only one chance to <laughs> <laughs> make it right. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. Lucky. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you for um, sharing your experience of the challenging case, and you and your team did a great job to taking care of this kind of sick patient. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now it's all the papers, so we close off uh, these sessions. Thank you for the uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck for travel. I think that the meeting having you is important. And you can see that the meeting, like I said, to organize a meeting, a lot of effort. The scientific sharing is one important thing, but it's not all. To create the atmosphere, the friendship and confidence and know the way of thinking is important. For this meeting, one of the most important things that I would like you to learn is the spirit to keep going on. This meeting can, end, can be ended, could be ended some days ago. In fact, from the corona virus, a lot of things unexpected, so sudden, so quick happened within days. The only thing that keep us doing in the spirit and friendship that can help you. And I all would like you to be here to, to get connected, knowing each other. Someday you will be the leader and then can help our society to carry on. And uh, we have the, these all already are leaders. I am the fading leader. <laughs> the old soldier never died, just faded away. So <laughs> I just would like to stress again, even though we are just a small group of number here, learn not just only the scientific, but the spirit, connection, and determination to turn around. This meeting taught us a lot how to be, get determined and turn around, and things come out to be good. We have over a thousand, eleven, one thousand, one hundred, more than, we, we should have more, but in these circumstances, it's good enough. 48 countries come to connect it. Okay. Just have a good luck and then continue your profession. Thank you very much. What did you do for them? Why they love you? Like because, like, like, like this meeting, we have a lot of them coming, and a lot of them is like caring about you, that's there, and why they love you a lot. I don't know. Can you tell us the difference for the younger generation? In fact, I don't know. In fact, no, I don't know. But uh, one thing that I keep going during my career and then been organizing the so many meetings, but each time I do my best. And I start not just, you know, some 
some meeting they set up the the protocol uh, and then they have the people come and then they just care this good is good it's going to put in two work how many work should be should be put in for this one to work to to something like you pay something they should pay something back I never start by that I, I, I always start by knowing that uh, the meeting has some important uh, guideline. Then we have friends that is good in this way. But I never think about anything else that I need to use them several. No. I start by asking them to come. And then I'm, I'm calling them every aspect from traveling, lodging, how they will be treated during the meeting, how is how is going to be to have the dinner, have the transportation, the safety, and how can I, this kind of thing. I always put in my details, and maybe this is something that they can feel the difference. They, they feel at home. And then slowly, one thing I would like you to be remember, you have to try your best to be good in your path, in your professions, as best as you could. Be the most genuine, genuine, real, feeling, real word promise to everyone that come to your meeting. And then every meeting, not just the meeting, make friends. Let them be your friend, even closer and closer and closer. And then perhaps that it's a good thing that some people come back to Thailand, like Patrick, Michael. They come not just one, two, or two times, ten times, every time. Uh, David, we associate, and then I know that he 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 has some. I mean, he is close friend, something like that. So many, many of them. If you do something like that, I think when time goes by, you got more friends. And don't ask them to sacrifice more than they want to do. Understand, like this time, they cannot come. I never have any bad feeling to them, anyone, tourists speaking. I respect them, I understand their constraint, and then that's the way it is. But the one who come, I respect them and then treat them in the even with my heart. That is, if you want to have someone heart, you have to use the, your heart to get someone heart, not the money, not the social activity, not the luxurious thing. Use your heart. Then you know everything. <laughs> Thank you. เขาเครียดจริงๆจังเขาบอกว่าตอนนี้ดอกเตอร์ทําดีเฟิร์สขอเรื่องเรื่องนี้เหรอเรื่องนี้เหรอเรื่องนี้เหรอเรื่องนี